Our goal was initially to flatten the curve so hospitals every year or two media blows some big pandemic out of proportion. A20. Are you are you kidding me? Hold on. I know you're probably just a troll, but let's Hey Peter, thank you for gifting a sub to this Trump troll in my chat. Yeah, 172,000 deaths. 172,000 COVID deaths. How many smoking deaths per year? Did the smoking deaths per year suddenly go from zero to 172,000 in three months? Is it, 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 Did that suddenly become like a global pandemic? Of course smoking deaths per year are a problem. So this is what's called a whataboutism. In order to dismiss the severity of an issue, you take a different issue of equal, lesser, or even greater importance and say that we need to care about that instead. Um, it's also a form of a relative privation fallacy, but that's a much bigger word, and I expect that you may struggle with things like that. Not a whataboutism, sweetheart. Oh, I love the sweethearts. Putting our reactions into perspective. It's 172,000 deaths in six months, you moron. Are you kidding me? Sorry, I'm taking you at face value. I, I'm like, I am about 70%. You're just a troll trying to get yourself banned. Um, but again, it's gonna take a, it's gonna take a little more than that. 172,000 deaths in, in the course of what? In the course of five months? Yeah, that you're, you're very smart. And how many dying per month from the lockdowns due to new worldwide hunger? Hey, listen, the left has a very, very easy fix for that. Very easy fix for that. Give people friggin' money. Easy. Oh wait, a B-list celebrity didn't tell you to care about it? No, worldwide hunger, a lot of B-list celebrities are telling me to care about it. A lot of A-list celebrities are telling me to care about it. We care about worldwide hunger. Yes, we need to care about all these issues, but this is the one that is killing us right now. And it is killing us at, at a much more increased rate relative to what it was six months ago. And it is the thing that we have the most capability to address because it requires the fewest systemic changes in our system. So of course, we're going to we're going to care more about dealing with COVID. Lockdowns killing far more than COVID because we have lockdowns. If we didn't have lockdowns, COVID would be killing more people. Our death toll would be in the millions. Our death toll would be much, much, much higher. The reason cases are going down is because we have imposed a lockdown. If we did not impose the lockdown, we would be dealing with far greater levels of that's true. People in GTR are not six feet apart. We would be dealing with far greater levels of death and, and COVID infection. This is the same argument as this is the same argument that Republicans and conservatives always make when you create a measure to deal with something that is objectively causing harm to society, and then um, whatever measure you put in place reduces that harm, and then the disappearance of that harm is what Republicans used to say, see, this isn't a problem. This was never a problem. We need to take away the measures. No, saying that COVID is not causing enough deaths to justify lockdowns is like putting a Band-Aid on a, on a paper cut, on a really bad paper cut, and then using the fact that it stops bleeding to say that the cut doesn't exist. Like, the reason there are so few COVID deaths is because of lockdown. And it's not so few COVID deaths. The reason there have only been 172,000 COVID deaths is because of the lockdown. And yes, people are going to die because of the economic measures. Fewer than if we hadn't actually put them in place. What you guys want to do is basically like take, uh, take the entire like senior and immunocompromised population and say, listen, see ya, Darwinism. If we lived in a Darwinistic society, we would, uh, we would be in a very, 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 very different kind of world. And I, you know what? I will bet. I will, I will take five to one odds. If this guy left. <laughs> I will take five to one odds that Waganator, if we imposed a full-on Darwinistic society, that the type of person to go into a Twitch chat and spam a bunch of pro-Trump talking points and then leave, chances are you're not going to survive that. You're not going to survive the eugenics wave. You're not going to survive the, uh, the abolition of a state that protects people that protects marginalized and threatened and, and, and physically disadvantaged people. Chances are you're not the kind of person who's going to survive that. Oh, Jesus. But hey, let's 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 go on uh, let's go on believing that the COVID lockdowns were a bad thing. Murders an innocent civilian on a motorcycle for joyride. Listen, listen. If he didn't want me to steal his bike, he should have been physically stronger. Okay. He should have worked out more. All right. He shouldn't have had chronic breathing problems from his childhood asthma. 
Okay, he shouldn't have caught COVID. He should have had the strength to be a more physically capable of defending himself person. And he should have bought more guns than me. He should have gotten a job that makes him enough money to buy all these guns. I feel bad because I was getting along with that person because they were talking about how um, Joe Biden's a flawed candidate. And I have no trouble saying, you know, of course Joe Biden's a flawed candidate. There's a big leap between that and... But largely, throughout this pandemic, states containing big cities have overwhelmingly been on their own receiving little to no assistance from the federal government. You know what's funny? This is what Trump does really, really, really well. It is hard for me to think of examples of what he has done wrong in COVID. And the reason for that is that he is able to recycle, recycle the news cycle with such expertise that when someone asks you what it is he did that made you mad four you days ago, lucky, you're not able to remember. Like, the thing I can remember right now is that he is trying to completely disembowel the USPS in order to win an election, which he literally flat out admitted to. So... And, you're like, he literally flat out admitted to trying to destroy the USPS in order to win the election. And still people are calling it a conspiracy theory. So the level of devotion his, his stands have for him. Like, they're Trump sims, right? Like, they, they're simping hard. Hard. But because of that, he manages to erase and re restart the news cycle to the, to the point where you just don't remember what he did four days ago. But uh, like every moment when, when it happens, you're like, okay, this is really Whoa, messed up. Too close. So like, unfortunately, I am not a, I'm not a COVID wonk, so... All right, what else do I need? I, so I just need the VACA and I need the, um, whatever that this car is. Like, it is a full-time job remember, remembering the ways in which he is screwing up his job. Because he's great at making you forget. He's like a, he's like a human neuralizer. By just yap, 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 yapping enough and tweeting enough. Um, but yeah, the travel ban should have been quicker. Um, other countries shut down travel a lot quicker. They're all doing better than the U.S. But one of the main powers of the president is as a figurehead. When the president of the country is promoting conspiracy theories, when he is promoting uh, drugs that have not properly been tested... and being highly equivocal in his rhetoric surrounding things like social distancing. Turns out that's problematic for the health and general welfare of the public. What's the most positive thing to come from a socialist society? Wonder what obscure thing chat will Google? Um, the, there, is only, there is only one socialist in chat or on stream. I am not a socialist. I, I think that Sal is a socialist. I am a hardcore social democrat. What is the most positive thing to come from a socialist society? You mean in history? In, um, Sock Dem is just commie light? Yeah, you just don't know anything about economic philosophy. And you don't know anything about economics. Uh, Sock Dem is not commie light. Sock Dem involves a lot of free flow of, hum uh, of, of private capital. Sock Dem allows for the 
what socialists continue, uh, what socialists insist is the exploitation of uh, the existence of labor is exploitation. Uh, social Democrats don't necessarily believe that. In fact, most of us don't. So Nordic model, yes, the Nordic model is a capitalist model. There is free, there is free flow of private capital. There are heavy regulations on it, but the social democratic model admits that there is immense amounts of social good that can come from profit motive. There's immense amounts of social good that can come from the existence of private capital. That's what social democracy is, dude. Like, I'm sorry, facts don't care about your feelings, uh, unfortunately, but that, that's exactly what social democracy is. Uh, but if you, if you want the most positive thing to come from a socialist society, look at the Indian state of Kerala, um, which is a successful communistic government uh, and the only successful communist experiment existent in the world. Um, of course, the big catch to Kerala is that the reason they're able to succeed as a communist society is that they're protected from interference or uh, they're protected from interference by a capitalist-run Indian government. So that concentration of power, and that monopoly of power that India has, with which it can protect one of its states that's decided to go full commie, is what allows them to conduct a successful communist experiment. And that's part of why I don't, you know, I don't support the abolition of private capital is because um, I don't think that uh, I don't think that democratically owned capital can protect itself from capitalistic interference. So the only way that one country can go socialist is if, you know, several dozen countries go socialist and we're all protecting each other because that's the only way we can gain enough power uh, to protect from interference. Which is why I'm not a socialist, right? Like, if, if you're going to go into chats and, and presume that everyone you argue with is a commie, you're going to be disappointed. Uh, there's, there's a whole lot of room. The problem is that you've grown up in this environment that tells you that anything to the left of where you are is a communist and, and the world works a little bit more, the world's a little more nuanced than that. But I'm, you know, I was about to say I'm sorry to break it to you. I'm actually not sorry to break it to you. I'm glad someone's breaking it to you. Not really a good 80% of Twitch politics is commie. Uh, I don't, I would love, I would love to see data on that. Um, I'm not saying it's not true. I have a hard time believing it. Uh, depends, are you talking about political streamers? Are you talking about political chatters? Twitch is definitely very right-leaning in terms of chat. Um, but, like, you know, there's a, there's just definitely a vocal leftist sentiment on Twitch. Um, channels like Central Committee and Hasanabi are both socialist. Um, who else? Um, Lumiru is definitely a socialist. Um, but their chat is not very vociferous. Um, I would love to see where this 80% number comes from. I'm thinking, you know, there's a lecture fan. Anyone who talks politics who isn't in the political sphere is probably not a socialist. In fact, they're probably pretty right-leaning overall that uh, non-politics streamers who talk about politics tend to spout off pretty right-wing beliefs. And as far as chatters go, the right dominates Twitch chats. Like, if you go into any Twitch chat, all these people are going to be, like... If you go into any Twitch chat, the only politics anyone's going to be talking about are, like, how annoying SJWs are and, oh my god, like, here's the edgy meme that, like, the left won't let me publish. Why can the left not meme? The left meme's perfectly fine. Um, the... You just, you just repeat something and, and, and hope it stays true. The, the problem is that, like... So, the problem is the right meme's also pretty well. What you guys do is you will take a... You will take like these SJW cringe compilations where you'll cherry pick situations in which uh, sometimes maybe a, a, a feminist said something that's controversial even within feminist circles and then you will take that as a representative of the entire movement um, but the left meme's perfectly fine okay real talk I thought it was a leftist back in the 2000s back like in like the Iraq war bush days but since then the left has just gotten nutty um, okay, I, it, it sounds like if you're swinging from left to right like that, it sounds kind of like a Dave Rubin kind of effect, and it sounds like you have not properly grounded what you believe in any kind of, like, rationalism or logic, uh, uh, uh per, per, per se. Um, like, there, the, the massive ideological swings like that are 
probably signs of not that you're realizing something like having a massive eureka moment it's probably more that your underlying logical processes are flawed and you're just kind of drifting toward the environment of whatever is influencing you at that particular time your chances are that you were either being um that that when you were when you thought you were super left that you were just influenced by extremely left uh environments and then you just wound up on in like some YouTube rabbit hole where you're like, oh my god, yes, the left is super cringe. Generally, you want to put in a little bit more legwork than that. And I will apply that same critique to a decent portion of the left, right? Most of Destiny's audience agrees with Destiny because it's senpai, right? Like, most of Vosh's audience just parrot his talking points. Um, and that's fine. Like, that, that, that is ultimately how the world is going to be. Uh, there's not much we can do about it. We just have to gain as much power as we can and, and try and like those of us who actually maybe put a little thought into our beliefs will try and get others to do the to do the same but ultimately that's going to be not a losing battle but but you can't put all of your eggs in that basket i'll have to go up this way um but yeah if 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 you're if you're a if you're a trump fan now and you are on the quote unquote left in the 2000s Unless you were like a kid in the 2000s, which no, even if you were a kid in the 2000s, because because there is pretty much no logically defensible, um, there is no lo there is no rational defense of Donald Trump um, during COVID. So um, if you consider yourself now like a Trump fan when you were a left uh, quote unquote leftist in the 2000s, chances are that is that has more to do with you. And um, you just need to work a little bit more on um, properly justifying your beliefs rather than kind of absorbing whatever goes on around you. For example, the perception that the left can't meet. If you took any amount of time, if you took any amount of time to fact check that claim, uh, you would realize that the left is perfectly capable of meaning. I interact with a uh, fantastic, I, I interact with the dankest of left memes uh, every single day because I'm in those circles where I'm exposed to solid left memes because I am a part of the left. Nope, it's that the political arena has shifted drastically in our lifetimes. Bush, Cheney, and the Republicans were pretty cringe back then and mostly still are. The Democrats took a de facto moral high ground by being the opposition, but since Obama's presidency, the left has shown that they do not have any moral high ground and have become far worse. Interesting. Um, yeah, I would be very interested in seeing any kind of material harm that has come from left power in the past uh, 16 years. It's going to be difficult to find it because, uh, so it's, no, it's actually you who doesn't believe or shifting or evolving your views as you grow and the world around you changes. That's un uneducated or unintelligent or whatever you said. My views have evolved immensely. In fact, I was hardcore neoliberal. Like, I was, I was one of those, like, go Hillary. Uh, I, I like what Bernie says, but I don't think that, uh, I don't think that it's realistic to aim for those things. Um... Um, I was a hardcore neoliberal. Leftist damage, Libya? What? H how, how has the American left caused harm in Libya? Please, I would, I would be very, very interested. Or, oh wait, no, are you a Benghazi, are you a, a Benghazi truther? If you're a Benghazi truther, then that's funny. That's, okay, yeah, that's, that, that would make sense. You're talking about Gaddafi? I would love for you to point me to a single leftist commentator who defends Gaddafi, but go off, Queen. That that would that would be like me saying capitalism doesn't work because of Augusto Pinochet, since Hillary and Obama ruined it. Um, if you think that uh, if you think that the destruction of the Middle East uh, is an American experiment that is only like eleven to twelve years old then you clearly don't remember pretty much everything that led up to it. Um, and, and the problem is that you think that Hillary and Obama are leftists. And so you say, Hillary and Obama, I think that they're leftists, and they ruined Libya. If you look on any, any section of the left, you will see that everyone to the left of Hillary and Obama 
um, absolutely lambasted them for their poor foreign policy. It was their least popular, it was the least popular sector of their, um, of their political platform, both Hillary and Obama. They got dis not destroyed because they didn't actually get destroyed. They got absolutely lampooned by the left for their foreign policy agenda. So no, Libya, Libya is not a product of left foreign policy. It's a product of neoconservative foreign policy that infiltrated the Democratic Party. This is exactly what Bush would have done. This is exactly what McCain would have done. McCain would have done it a million times more intensely. Dems and Republicans have the same problem. Their criticisms of each other are mostly fake. They just take turns in power. That is not true. They don't have the same, pla they have the same foreign policy platform. Well, they have similar foreign policy platforms, but Republicans are worse in every single way. Their corporate Dems are arguably conservative. On foreign policy, they are conservative. On foreign policy, uh, Hillary and Obama are neocons. On foreign policy specifically, all right, I'm not going to the Democrats or conservatives in every way argument. Uh, Biden is also foreign policy-wise a neocon. And two out of three of those people voted for the Iraq War. So, I'm like, as senators. Like, they are neoconservatives. Um, their criticisms of each other are mostly fake. No, not true. Um, Democrats, conservatives, or Republicans are highly valid. Uh, but the problem is that Democrats don't actually go far enough to correct for and to close the power vacuums that cause Republicans to gain power. So Democrats aren't aggressive enough about fixing the material issues that lead people to vote Republican. Um, they allow Republicans to get away with way too much. Democrat cities are on fire right now? Yes, because they're cities. Republican cities are on fire right now. The problem is there aren't enough of them. So this is, this, is, this is what's called correlation bias. Cities are going to be struck much harder by COVID. Cities are going to be struck much harder by, um, by over-policing issues involving black people. When there are protests, when there are riots around the world, uh, around the country, cities are going to be hit hardest. Guess what? Cities have the highest black populations. Cities have the highest population density. This leads to more COVID deaths. This leads to more, uh, this leads to more rioting in the case of protests. You clown. Dems and Republicans shake hands behind closed doors. Yes, politicians make deals behind closed doors, and this is a problem. This is something that we, um, this is something that we criticize, uh, this is something that we criticize Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer about all the time, is that they don't take on Republicans because they're going to have to make deals with them later on. That, uh, during the election, well, I think it was during the election, that, uh, during the 20, 2018 election, that uh, Pelosi specifically and intentionally did not throw her support behind, or oh no, it was 2016, that there was a strong challenger to Paul Ryan in Wisconsin, and Pelosi refused to invest into his campaign the, ki the kind of money that she ordinarily would because she needed to work with Paul Ryan um, if if that person lost. And if she flooded money into the campaign to unseat him, she felt like she wouldn't have as much bargaining uh, bargaining power with Paul Ryan. And that's a problem, and she gets criticized for it. I support her primary challenger, or not her primary challenger, her actual challenger, because it's a jungle primary. Um, her challenger is a leftist named uh, Shahid Buttar. It's just funny, because like you call, you try and insult Democrats by calling them leftists, but you're insulting leftists. Uh, like, we don't claim these people. They're just better than you. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy the video and want to see more content, the best way you can support the channel is to click that like button and subscribe for future videos. Uh, I will be covering all sorts of topics. Uh, the election, I'll be talking about Biden, the Democratic Party, the global right, healthcare, all sorts of stuff. And if you'd like to join the discussion live, I stream live to Twitch weekdays, typically 1 p.m. Eastern time. Otherwise, stay tuned for more videos out regularly. Have a great day. Thank you.